Hi guys, we will start learning rapid minor for some data analysis and machine learning problems. So we will start with some basics. So we can see, we can import our own data set using import data and we can browse here. But here I'm using uh, some, some of sample data which comes with rapid minor. So I will use Titanic data set so first of all we will have a look on this data set so this is a data set about titanic passengers it gives all details about passengers which is name passenger class sex age and either passengers survived in titanic or not so what we are going to do first is we will drag this data set from here to this window this one and then we can attach with output and run so we can see data set here it has been imported successfully so next we will uh, do some tasks to get some more insights of this data set so we will visualize this data set we can go in visualizations and we will select histograms and we will select age and survived. So we can see without any coding, we got this histogram. So we can get more insights of this data set. If we select If we want to see by sex, either uh, they were male or female. Okay, so now we will perform some other operations on this data set. So if we go to here in operators, in blending, and examples, sort. So we will put sort here and we will attach it here and this one here and we we will uh, choose an attribute which we want to sort so we will see the results which has highest paid fare so we will sort by passenger fare now we will run and we can see the re results So these are all the results which uh, favor highly paid. Now we can see it's in descending order. So now in the same way we will choose some filter operators for example filter examples we will delete this sort one and we will put here so we can attach this one here and this one here and we will add a filter so we will uh, suppose we want to see all the passenger records of female okay we will run it and we will see it's showing us all the records of female this one so in the same way we can add something else we can try something interesting mm. So now we can see this one, first class passengers. Okay, now we will use a 
another operator discretized by binding so we will select it here and delete this so basically what it does it categorize data set by any defined variable so we will select single and we will categorize by age and we will categorize in three three ranges run it so we can see age has been categorized in three ranges range 1, range 2 and range 3. So this was the way how we can do simple analysis with rapid miner. This video is about data pre-processing. In this video we will learn how to clean a data set and how to handle with missing values using rapid miner. Now I will choose again titanic data set. The reason of choosing this data set is we can see this data set has lots of missing values as here in this attribute there is lots of missing values as uh, lifeboat is all numeric values and it should be numeric this is the number of lifeboats so it can be any number but there is some alphabets that means uh, it, it is wrong values for this attribute so we should replace it or we should delete it we will see how to handle with these values so first of all what we will do is we will go in operators in blending examples filter we will select filter examples operator we will drag it here and we will add some filters so we have seen lifeboat has lots of missing values so we will select that attribute and we will choose is not missing and we will apply this and run so now we can see we have only the records which has no no missing values in lifeboat there is another way where we can get rid of all missing values so we click on this operator and we can choose no missing attributes and run it you can see now we don't have any missing values in the in our data set there is another problem we have wrong values in lifeboat attribute so how we will replace these alphabets with a number we can use another operator if we go under here and in values there is a replace operator we will use it here what it does we can choose an attribute lifeboat and it will replace any letter by zero we can choose any number apply and run so we can see lifeboat is here so it replaced d by zero and all alphabets by zero okay there is another attribute which uh, almost does same thing if we go in cleansing missing missing replace missing values so we will delete this one and we will try this so what it does it replace all missing values with average value this is the most common way to replace missing values now we can see there is another thing which need to be fixed in this data set that age has fraction numbers 
steps and 0 0.9 is invalid age and there is some more values same like that like 32.500 so what we will do for this we will go in attributes types and we will use operator real to integer run it so now we can see it fixed fraction numbers so we will start with a new data set i will go in local repository and under there i have already imported data set uh, belfast bikes i will drag it here connect with output and run it so we can see this data set here this is the data set about bikes rented in belfast city so here's the place name month year and amount of uh, number of rentals and number of returns so i'm interested to know in which month of which year how many bikes were rented i will go in design view first i want to select the attributes uh, which i want to analyze so i will go in blending attributes selection and selected attributes i will choose a subset of attributes so which is month rentals and year now i will run it now i will go in visualization tab and i will select bar on x-axis i will select rentals and i will choose aggregate data group by month and color by year So now we can see um, colors represent years. So and uh, on x axis we have months. And now we can see in each month of the year how many bikes were rented. So maximum were in July, June and July of 2007, which were 42 bikes were rented. So this is very nice and simple way of visualization of your data set without any coding. Now next I want to see from which specific place bikes were rented mostly. So I will go in design view and I will select attributes. Mm. Not year, not month. I will select rental and place name. Run it. So now I choose these two attributes. And now I want to visualize this. Now I will go in visualization tab. And I will choose horizontal bar this time. So here I will go for rentals. and group by place name and I will choose some because I want to know the total number of bikes which rental so this is our horizontal bar chart and we can see from ODC 34,405 bikes were rented 
now what if i want to know how many bikes were returned um, at the same place so i will go here and i will deselect rentals and i will select returns Run it run it so now i got returns instead of rentals and i will go in visualization so now i can see this are uh, these are the number of returns instead of rentals so this is the way we can visualize um, all of our data set in many different ways here we performed some simple analysis using visualization techniques so you can perform any type of analysis with any type of data set hi in this video we will learn how to make predictions on a specific type of problem using a data set today we will use decision trees for this purpose we will analyze and visualize how a decision tree algorithm makes some predictions on a data set okay so let's start we will choose golf data set let's have a look on a data set first so this is data set about golf players either they will play or not so what circumstances make difference on their decision by looking on this data set it's very hard to know how a player makes decision either to go play golf or not it might be affect uh, his or her decision by temperature humidity or it's windy or not either some players wants to go in sunny day either some wants to go in cloudy so how we can more betterly visualize decision tree is a very effective way to visualize and to make some proper predictions so let's see how to use decision trees in this data set if you go in modeling under prediction trees we will pick decision tree and we will run it so here you go here we can see uh, outlook represents the weather so it's if it's overcast then most of players will go to play golf so if it's rain if weather is windy so many of players will not go to play golf and falls means if there is no wind then yes lots of players will go to play golf and if weather is sunny and with sunny there is humidity and humidity is greater than 77 then no one will go to play golf and if it is less than 7, 77 so that means it's sunny and pleasant weather so most of players will go to play golf so we can see this is much easier way to predict and to visualize how to make a decision using some specific data set now we will use some other data set for same process let's have deals data set and first have a look on the data set so this is a data set about uh, customers loyalty so it's very strange how we can make a decision either this customer will be uh, a loyal customer in future or not only by looking at gender and age and payment method let's see how decision trees make this prediction by using uh, these type of attributes there you go it is starting by attribute age so first if age is greater than 31 then it checked by gender 
if gender is female so there is very less ratio of uh, customers we can see it's 32.40 percent we might say no female will be not a loyal customer in future if we see if gender is male and uh, uh, what payment method they used so either they use cash check or credit card so we see if we if they use cash so there uh, they we can say they might be not a loyal customer because they have very less ratio only 11.70 percent of customer used cash and if they use check so what was the check amount it was greater than 35 or less than 35 so if it is less than 35 then we can say yes and if payment method is credit card then most of the customers are loyal customers now if we see if age is less than or equal 31 then what happens so first we will analyze by payment method so if they pay by cash we will see either they are male or female so if they are female so they have very less ratio 2% so only 2% female used cash so if they are male so they used their ratio is 4.40% it's greater than female ratio and if they pay by check then again we will see the gender and the payment method is if credit card so regardless they are male or female they are loyal customer because their ratio is very high it's 19 percent so this is very simple but intellectual way to make some decisions and to visualize how a decision tree algorithm works let's start by another data set which is called society data set so we will see what this data is about so this data set is all about a uh, number of suicide happened in uh, different countries in during the different years so we have some information here so we will see how to use this all attributes and information to get some more detailed insights of this data set so first of all we can see there is some missing values to remove these missing values we already learned there is different ways we can uh, impute missing values or we can remove missing values so here we will use a filter option this is very simple we can select no missing attributes so we have only the attributes those don't have any missing value if I want to see according to the gender who committed mostly the suicides uh, either it was male or female so how I can see that obviously uh, looking of this data set I don't know uh, male committed most of suicides or either female so let's perform some analysis on that okay for this purpose we will um, go in selection and we want to select some specific attributes so we will choose subset and here uh, as I said I want to see according to gender so I will select sex and suicide number so now I want to perform analysis only on these two attributes now I will select by and I will choose aggregate data and aggregate function I will choose sum here we can see clearly male ratio were more than female ratio who committed the suicide now i want to see in which year most suicides happened 
what was the gender so now um, i want to see in which year most suicides happened so such type of analysis are useful when uh, we want to see what was the reason in some uh, specific year or in some specific country why suicides happened over there so we can have some control so let's see how we can do that um, now i want to choose year okay let's visualize this so we can understand better we will choose bar chart this time and group by year so now this is very wonderful chart and we can clearly see in which year uh, there were maximum suicides and who committed those suicides either male or female so this is about 2001 and male and female has same ratio and now this is uh, 2010 sorry 2009 and again male and female have same number of suicides So 2009 were the year where maximum suicide happened and after that it was 2010 and 2001. Now I want to see um, which country in which year has uh, what ratio of suicide. So how we will do this and we will select some attributes. Um, and I want country we will use vector graph vector graph will show us either number of societies are increasing or decreasing by every year in different countries So let's select country here and here, here. So now we can see in every year, by every year in each country, number of suicides are decreasing gradually. Okay, so now we want to see suicide rate by age group now let's select age six and run it let's select bar chart horizontal And uh, value columns, site number, aggregate data, group by each. We want to see total number, so we will select sum and we will select sex. So here you go what we can see here is the maximum number of suicide committed by male under age 35 to 54 and the minimum were the female under age 5 to 14 now there is another very important aspect which we want to see is which country people maximum committed suicide
so let's have a look we can either choose bar chart or area chart so we will select area and value column will be so side number so here we can see maximum number were suicided in russian federation after that second number it is united states and at third number it's japan now let's have a look uh, either by the passing time suicide rate has increased or decreased so how we can see that obviously we will select number of years and number of suicide so um, we want the um, suicide number and year and apply on it now let's have a look so if we want to see any trend either it is increasing or decreasing so line chart is the best for that here you go so we can see by the time it is decreasing so it was very high suicide rate during the 2000 to 2010 and then it started decreasing it's starting going down um, in 2011 and 2012 and then suddenly it goes down and in 2016 it's very good there's very less suicide rate so thank you so much for watching this video and i try to teach you some uh, very simple ways how to analyze your data set